us to solve some of the problem with structures. Another concept that is very important in the introduction part of it is about element theory. And finally, the laws, the, the law of parallelogram, the parallelogram law of forces. So to start with, to start, to start with, um, it's just introduction to a uh, theory of structures. We say, we say, uh, in engineering project, a certain materials like steel, girders, iron angles, and also circular bars, uh, and so many other materials are widely used. So until we know the strength of such materials, we do not use those in engineering works. So we have this topic known as strength of material or theory of structure. This is the subject that deals with the detailed study about the effect of force of materials and the ability of materials to resist failure. So uh, theory of structures this is a subject that is uh, dealing with the detailed study of the effect of force. Forces, external force of materials, and the ability of those materials to resist failure. Actually, it's all about analysis, uh, analysis of structures uh, and designing. We analyze, then we design those structures. So, knowing the strength of such materials so that the size and shape of various structures are designed. So, we have this 1.2 as the system of units. And we have two classification or basically two uh, types of, of units. We have the fundamental units and also we have what we call derived units. So when we talk about the fundamental unit, this is, this is the unit that is, these are units which are, are used to measure the basic quantities. And we have the seven basic quantities. Hopefully we know them. Eh? Hopefully we know them. Then we have the sub, the sub, um, the subdivision of these fundamental units, and we have four systems which are universally accepted. And this method are number one. We have the FBS. FBS means food. Uh, F, FBS. Actually, it should be FPS. F means means uh, food. P stand for pound, and S stand for centimeter. So this system is known as the foot uh, pound, yeah. the foot pound, uh, and second. Sorry, second, <coughs> second. So the foot pound second. Uh, this is a system that uh, is also known as the. BIS or the British Imperial System. So uh, this means that the meters, the, the length is measured in foot, the mass is measured in a pound, and the and and the time time is measured in seconds. That that is the meaning of FBS and the uh, as a system of measure. Secondly, we have the CGS unit. When you talk about the CGS unit, this is a system uh, in full. It's called it's called, uh, it's called um, centimeter uh, <coughs> gram second centimeter gram second. This means that the first C stand for, uh, of course, it's a unit of measure uh, of, uh, of of length, which is a uh, centimeter. We have the second measure of, uh, of course, G stand for grams and it's a measure of uh, mass. Then S stands for second seconds, and it's a measure of time. So our third, our third, is, our third system of uh, system is the MKS. MKS means meters, uh, then kilogram, then second. So this means that uh, the, 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 the the measure of length is meters. The length, the measure of mass in this case is kilograms and also the measure of time and that method is centimeters then. then we have the SI unit the SI unit mean the standard the standard standard international system of units so this is the one that is commonly or universally known and it's used it is used by most of the technicians and scientists for their works so we have these fundamentals, this table here shows the fundamental unit. Uh, 
uh, and the, uh, the four system of this system of, system of measuring the fundamental units. Eh? So we have the fundamental units, uh, length, mass, and time, and we have discussed the measure in each. We say the FBS means foot, pound, and second. The CGS unit means means centimeter, gram, and second. MKS unit means meters, kilogram, and second. And the SI unit means standard international system. So <coughs> this table basically shows the measure of the units of each of the fundamental unit in all the in all the, the, the in all the, the system. Eh? Basically, the, the basic unit of all is the SI unit. The basic unit of all is the SI unit. And we say the SI unit is an international system of measurement that are usually uh, or used universally in technical and scientific research to avoid confusion with the unit. So we have the physical quantities or the basic quantities. We have the seven basic quantities. We have length, mass, time, temperature, strength, so current, current strength and luminous intensity. So the SI unit for, the, for, for measuring uh, the same, uh, for length is meters, for mass is kilogram, for time is seconds, temperature is degrees Kelvin, current strength is measured in amperes, and luminous intensity is measured in candelas. So the abbreviation used for meter is M, the abbreviation used for kilogram is kg, for second is second or S, for degrees Kelvin is degrees Celsius, we have amperes, uh, A amperes is abbreviated as A, capital A and candlas is appreciated as capital C and small d. So those are the system, those are the system. So we have some of the commonly used drive quantities and we have to know exactly what is a drive quantity and we say drive quantity are used to express quantities which are formed by combining two or more basic, uh, of course, fundamental units. They are used to express uh, quantities by combining two or more fundamental units. So, for this case, we have some of the derived quantities, some of the derived units, and the quantities we have the force, we have pressure, mass density, we have work, we have energy, and power. So, the SI unit for the same, for force is newton, for pressure is newton per meter squared or pascal. We have the mass density as kilogram per meter cubic. We have work is measured in joules. The SI unit for work is joules or newton per meter. Energy is just ability to do work and is measured in uh, is due. The power is the power the power is measured in watts or joules per second. <coughs> so we have we have what we call the, 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 the unit for stress. Uh, stress is, of course, stress is a drive quantities and uh, it depends upon the unit of force and area. So we have the unit, the, the, the SI unit for the stress is Newton per meter or Newton per millimeter squared. We have some, some conversion between so we have to know the conversion between different units because in most of the arithmetic or the problems that we get in structures, we have to know we have to be very conversant with the conversion of the units. So we have some rules for, uh, to be observed when using the SI units. We have the prefix. We have the prefix. Uh, the, the, the common prefix are the giga. Mega, kilo, mil, milli, macro, and nano. So we have to know how to convert them and their multiplication factors. Eh? We have to know the multi multiplication factor of a giga. We have to know a multiplication factor of, of a mega, a multiplication factor of a kilo, and also the rest. So <coughs> the next item uh, abroad is about. Uh, 
useful mathematical information and data. So we have to borrow some concept of mathematics so that we can be able to uh, perform some uh, numeric calculations in structures. Eh? And we borrow the concept of the concept, uh, we borrow the first concept uh, from algebra. And we know that algebra is the study of variables and the rules of manipulating the variables. So algebra, we know that algebra is the study of variables and the rules of manipulating the variables and the rules are very simple. We have the, the, the laws of indices, we can know, borrow the law of indices. We have the quadratic equation, and we also have the laws of logarithms. So, we borrow th those concepts from mathematics and they, they will help us in solving uh, some of the problems in theory of structures. The second co common uh, concept in front of we borrow from mathematics is trigonometry and we know that trigonometry is a branch of mathematics that is concerned with the relationship that is concerned with the, with the relationship between the angles and the ratio of length so we normally say that um, tri trigonometry is a branch of mathematics uh, concerned with the relationship between the angles and the ratio of its Length. So, we, we have to actually know the trigonometric identities because those identities or functions will help us in solving a lot of uh, problems regarding to st structure. Then, then we, have, we will apply the sine rule and the cosine rule for the same. We have to actually, again, uh, the concept that is widely used or the, the, the concept that we borrow most is from calculus and we have two types of calculus uh, we have in differential calculus and we also have the integral calculus and we say cal calculus is the study of continuous change and we have two we have differential calculus and we say differential calculus eh? differential calculus concern in the in the strenuous rate of change so we have then integral Calculus, and we say integral calculus deal with the uh, accumulations of quantities. It deal with the accumulations of quantities. So those are the useful information, mathematical information, and the data that will help us, uh, or we will borrow from mathematics, and will help us in solving some of the structure, structure structures problem uh, in theory of structures. Or in strength of material. Another concept is 1.4 is Lamen's theorem. Lamen's theorem was uh, this is a theorem that was uh, basically derived by a good friend known as Bernard Lamy. And the theory, the theory of course says, uh, so the theory it relates the magnitude of coplanar, co-current, and collinear. Collinear, collinear forces uh, that uh, maintain an object in a static equilibrium. The theorem is very useful. It's very useful in analyzing most of the me me mechanical as well as structural system. Basically, it's very true. And when you say the the coplanar, uh, the coplanar, uh, this means that all the forces are acting in the same plane. When the, all the forces are acting on the same plane, we say those forces are coplanar forces. And when you talk about the co-current, meaning that all the forces applied to a body are such that the line of action meet at the same point. And another 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 um, term there that look an uh, unusual is collinear forces. Eh? And we say collinear forces, this means that forces whose line of action lie on the same line. So uh, collinear forces mean that all its forces lies on the same line. So when we relate, when we relate all the concept of collana, or the coplanar, co-current, and collinear forces, we will be able to uh, derive or get the concept of Lamen's theorem. So it is state the Lamen's theory state that it states 
that if the three co-planner forces acting on a point be in equilibrium, then each force, each force is proportional to the same angle between the other, the other two. So basically, uh, this, the, 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 the later part of the, the later part of that statement, the later part of that statement uh, summarizes uh, the sign rule. Summarizes the sign rule. So uh, let's say if P, Q, and R are three forces acting on a point O, and alpha, beta, and gamma be the angles uh, acting as in the, the, this figure below. So let's say this is our figure. We have this force known as Q. We have this force known as P. We have this force known as R. So these are the forces acting. On, and those are three coplanar forces. Mean, and we say coplanar forces mean they act on the same plane. They act on the same plane. These are two D. They act on the same plane, two D, in two dimension. For this case, it's in two dimension. Eh? So yeah, uh, and we have alpha. We have angle beta. Uh, sorry, gamma and our angle beta. So then, uh, in the second part of the statement, uh, the above statement says that then each force is proportional to the same angle between the other, the other two. So then, this is the formula that we will apply to get any of the unknown forces or unknown uh, terms. So we say P all over sign alpha, a beta, sorry, equal to Q all over sign alpha uh, gamma is equals to r over sine alpha so lamen's theory lamen's theory derivation we have to derive this lamen's theory and we say mm, let f force a force b and force c uh, be the force acting at a point so the sum of the forces acting at a given point Equilibrium, uh, the sum of forces acting at a given point in equilibrium equal to zero, then force A plus force B plus force C equal to zero. So all the sum of all those forces equal to zero. Then the, the angle the angles made by the forces vectors when the triangle is drawn are of course written written in complementary uh, angle and we use written in complementary angles huh? <coughs> so we see the angles made by forces vector when triangle is drawn uh, and the angles are written in terms of complementary angles and use the use the triangular law of vector vectors addition so if this is if this is that triangle this is triangle let's say a b c and d if this is our triangle a b c and d we have this force a we have this force b and force c uh, acting the sum so they have, we have said the force a plus force c b plus force c equal to zero then we have to write these angles in terms of complementary angles. And we say we have to uh, remember back uh, what is a complementary angle, by the way. And a complementary angle, uh, complementary angle is a sum of two forces that, that add, up to, add up to 90 degrees. Complementary angle uh, is a sum of two angles that add up to 90 degrees. So, for this case, for this case, we know that uh, the sum of all the sum of uh, all angles in a triangle must add up to 180 degrees. So, in each case, in each case, it will be 90 minus alpha, and we will we'll get one angle. We will get an angle, and that angle. 
it if we add another if we add an unknown another unknown angle it should up to add up to 90 degrees so for this case for this case for this case is 180 minus alpha for this angle is 180 minus beta for this case is 180 minus gamma so we see a all over sine in bracket 180 minus alpha equal to b all over sine 180 minus beta equal to c all over sine 180 minus gamma so then we get this we apply the sine root and we get this equation which can be used to find any of the unknown terms in that equation so number so 1.5 is parallelogram law of forces and in the parallelogram law of forces we have to define what is a resultant force in this case and we see a resultant force is a force which can replace two or more forces and produce same effect uh, on a body as the other forces then we have methods of finding uh, a resultant force we have three methods of finding a resultant force we have a parallelogram law of forces we have triangular law of forces and we have the polygon law of forces the the the, 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 the first the first the first one the former in this case which is parallelogram is used uh, when we, in the lower analysis that is maybe in theory of structures one but triangular law of forces and the polygon law of forces the latter are used in mechanics are commonly used in mechanics so parallel parallelogram law of forces the law state that the law state that if two forces acting simultaneous on a particle be represented in magnitude and direction by the side of a parallelogram, their resultant may be represented by the magnitude and direction by the diagonal. So let's say this is our let's say this is our para, this is our force Q and our force P, which form this kind of a parallelogram and a parallelogram that is A, B, C, and D. Then their resultant force their resultant may be represented by the by magnitude and direction by the diagonal. So the resultant mean the resultant means the sum of two forces representing um, it can be represented as one. So uh, and for this case is R. Right? If we, if the, if represented as R the, or the diagonal from A to C. first topic uh, will be stress and strain but we can see that in our next question so kindly consider subscribing consider subscribing to this beautiful young growing channel because we are a group of professional dedicated to providing quality services uh, which is easy to understand we will en enable you to uh, pass Kenya National Examination Council as well as being competent in the construction field. So kindly consider subscribing and also comment on this video below. If there's anything that you, you wish us to discuss, kindly uh, consider subscribing and commenting. Give this video a thumbs up. So our number that if you want to get rich of us, our WhatsApp number is 07033 If I can repeat our number for the last time, our WhatsApp number is 07033